Jayhawk fans, this is Bill Self. If you have an urgent orthopedic or sports injury, the University of Kansas Health System can see you quickly. Request an appointment at kansashealthsystem.com slash sportsmedicine. Hour number two of The Zone here on a Victory Monday brought to you by our friends at Google Fiber. Don't forget their one gig of service, Todd Lebo, has been the same price since they started in 2012 here in Kansas City. $70 a month, no bundles, no contracts, $70 a month for one gig of service. Now with Google Wi-Fi, better Wi-Fi included, one gig at no extra cost, enough internet for everyone and all their devices all at once. If one gig's not enough for you, I don't know why it wouldn't be. But they've got 2 gig as well for just $30 more a month. Even higher speeds available for the most advanced users. I'm not the most advanced user. I'm sure uh, I was the, maybe the first person in my neighborhood to sign up when they came around. For 2 gig or, or for Google gig. Fiber in when general? When they installed okay. it. I was yeah. like the first guy in. Uh, let me tell you something. When you have a, a son at, who lived with us at the time who was a gamer, mm-hmm. You had to get the gig, man. Ain't no lag on those games. Yeah. So 100%. You have kids in the house, and all, with all the work done, getting done at home these days, wonderful service. One gig for $70, two gigs for $100. The two gigs includes Wi-Fi 6, which is the latest Wi-Fi standard available. So uh, if you do not have Google Fiber and it is available in your area, you should get it. That's all I'm going to say. Looking at uh, Good Morning Football highlights right now, it's Dan Sorensen. You got a pick six last night, Todd Lebo. He did. Um, he just always seems to every once in a while make that play. Just seems to make that play. It's like, and, a, like a golfer. You play terrible and you hit that one shot that I'm makes coming you keep back, coming baby. back. You, I'm coming back. I, I like um, his attitude as, you know, what he, he knows. I mean, I know last night he said he's not on social media, blah, 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 doesn't listen, doesn't hear, which is so funny compared to Chris Jones after the last game. Yeah, yeah we, we, we know what y'all mm-hmm. been saying. You know, we're trash, blah, 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 all this stuff. You have to know what people are saying. And Dan Sorensen does have an Instagram account. And nothing has been uh, Instagrammed from it in eight weeks. And I don't know if it's him or something. I mean, he's obviously in the pictures and the videos and things. It's like with his family and Disney World and stuff like that. But nothing has been posted since the first Sunday night football game of the year. Because he's probably tired of if he just makes a random post, right. people start or, or replying with how terrible he is. Could be his football. wife, agent, yeah. whatever, whatever. You know, there's plenty of things on there about, you know, charities and stuff like that. But he is not someone who's like, last night, post game, it was like Patrick Mahomes is tweeting about, I think, an offensive coordinator got hired at Tech. He's tweeting about it. Okay, so there are guys like that, mm-hmm. him and Tyron, who are on there, and this is what they do. And there are guys like Dan Sorensen who it's just not for them. Dan Sorensen would probably be on there more if, if he were better. Weren't or playing you know as maybe as maybe most of us shouldn't be on there as much. I agree with that. But my wife would agree with that. He, um, it is so funny that he ends up making plays like this. It's like it's just wild. And it was I thought the the funniest part of the play I thought was the fact that. Teddy Bridgewater caught so much crap in the Eagles game that they lost for not trying to tackle. <laughs> he at and, least put a shoulder on him. And he pushed Dan Sorensen <laughs> forward. Yeah. Says, I'm going to give you a boost to the end zone. It was so pitiful. It was, it was so so Andy Reid last night after the game, un, unprompted, in, unprovoked. In the opening segment. He wanted to make sure people knew his thoughts about Dan Sorensen. It was good to see Dan. You know, Dan, a few weeks ago, I was sitting in here, and um, everybody wanted him gone. And um, and, and this is what's so great about this game. I mean, all of a sudden, uh, he's back and performing. His last two games have been beautiful things to watch there. Uh, For the record, I still want him gone. (laughs) You're not alone. if Andy Reid is going to say that now suddenly everybody loves Dan Sorensen, because he made a play in last night's game, like give me a break. Loved him for 15 seconds. Last give night. me a break. Like the sun well, shines on a dog ass, a dog's ass every once in a while. There is something more to Andy Reid and, and Dan Sorensen. They both went to BYU. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a special place. Mm-hmm. It's more than just a college, right? It's oh, a yeah. way of life and all that stuff. So there's that. Mm-hmm. But there's also something about Dan Sorensen. Dan Sorensen ha- has had a great, fantastic career in the National sure. Football League. Undrafted, he's he's played. In the league for years, he has made it past just being some guy who's going to be on a practice squad. He has made big plays in big games. He's gotten a freaking ring. He's gone to Super Bowls. And he's made big plays on the way to getting that ring. It's been a part of why they did it. You know, he was a part of, I think back, I mean, 
people remember the the you know the Texans game that being down twenty four nothing the hits he put on and the play he made on the fake and all fake that punt, kind of stuff. Yep. But the one that kind of gets lost in the shuffle was the hit last year on the goal line against the Browns. You know, when the ball ended up going out mm-hmm. of bounds and they got the ball, and that was it was a huge play. Patrick in that game. was hurt. I mean, yeah. they, they were real danger, right? Real danger of not winning. So this dude does that. Now he also gets beat, and we assume because you see people throw their hands up that that was all his fault. Maybe someone else was supposed to do something. I don't know. Physically, he is not as fast, can't jump as high, whatever. But he does work hard, and he does study, and he gets himself somewhere. And on that play last night, Tyron Matthew explained it. It's like you know, he went and found something during the play because his responsibility got taken up by something else, and he just got yeah, himself. Yeah, he was supposed to cover the back out of the backfield. The back picked up a blitzer. So he's like, i got to find so something he, to do. We just stood there, Well, but, and the ball got tipped to him. And he caught it. And he caught it. And he, and, and he ran. And he ran and scored. Yeah. I love Juan Thornhill. But Juan Thornhill should have gone out of bounds at the 45-yard line instead of trying to double back and go somewhere. Well, we know that now. Well, even he, As bad as the offense has been playing Lebo, he's just trying to make a play. But I would rather have the Chiefs offense at the Denver 45 sure. than their own 30. Sure. Everyone wants to be a hero. I don't think he thought there was going to be a blindside block. and he's not the, either, Defensive guys just want to score. I know Lebo. they do. But either way, even without the penalty, he was losing yards on that play because he yeah. was going to get tackled back yeah. there. So I love the spirit and all that stuff, but they should all be coached. Dude, you just pick the ball up get and got you 25 get. yards and get out of bounds. Yeah. Cause if you were really good, Juan Thornhill, you'd be back there returning kicks and stuff. You're not that guy. So when you're three feet from the sideline on the 45-yard line and you try to go the other way, yeah. that ain't going to work. Okay, It ain't happening for you. It was mostly only bad that was going to happen from that point. Right. And it, and it, it got ended worse. up being bad. It got worse. because They he got lost the yardage and they got the penalty. Yeah, and then with the Chiefs offense being what it was, they, they got nothing. Which, by the way, that was a penalty. It is. It's not blindside, it, whatever. It's the rule they have. It's player safety. This is what the union I has mean, agreed to. Hitch loaded up yes. and laid that dude out. I bet he gets fined. He may. I, I, not only is it a penalty, and They're if you not thought it wasn't a penalty, I, I, they don't block people. Yeah. The offensive guys know. But I bet the, he gets a fine from the league. And the people who play special teams know you can't do that. You can't do that play because it's been a few years that that's been in existence, and they call it really tight in college football. I've seen some of that called in college football. It's like an offensive play, and someone's coming down for what they used to call the crackback. And defensive guys are usually on the receiving end of yeah. those, so they, they like to give one. They, they like to, to give it. one when they get a chance, and it wasn't a very smart play. I mean, he, he was just, just loading if up. If he just stood there and kind of was like, blah, 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 in yeah. front of him, it would have been fine. Yeah. And you see it on kick returns. There was a kick return last night where I think the, 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 the Chiefs doubled back. No, it might have been the Broncos play after when the Chiefs punted at the end of the first half after not trying to go score. And the Broncos players, because the play was not just going where it was designed, and they went running down, and they just kind of put their hands up mm-hmm. and kind of dance in front of the guy so they don't get that. That's what penalty. you got to do now. Hitch is probably worth it. He yeah. liked it. You oh, know. I, I bet he's – now that the, it didn't cost them, you know, yeah. if, if they wouldn't have scored oh, on that drive. They'll enjoy that in the playroom. And, oh, they'll, the, they'll have the some tape. fun with it, yeah. But I wouldn't be shocked if He'd he got fined. probably been put on his butt by that guy during play, right? And then you get your chance, you go take it. But Sorensen – Made a huge play last night. Made a winning play. Sure. Made a winning he did. play. But that doesn't mean – and he doesn't play 100% of the snaps. He's not out there all the time anymore. He's out there at spots. And, and some also, people look but, up and they go, I don't want him out there. But while Andy wants to act like Dan Sorensen made this incredible play, go back and watch it. He was just standing there because the guy he was supposed to cover picked up a blitzer. So he's literally just kind of standing there in the middle of the field. But we've seen people – And Ben Neiman gets the tip. We've Which, seen... by the way, was going to end the drive. That was fourth down. Fourth down, yeah. So the, the 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 drive was over. It's not like if Sorensen doesn't intercept it, the Broncos then go in and score. But the Chiefs were getting the ball back. Though. Getting six was important. Yeah. It was a nice run Especially back. Especially going in that direction because nothing good happened going that direction for on sure. offense all night long. He gets credit for the run yeah. back. But acting like he's now this... Yes, really good player that you can rely on we have seen is people, completely disingenuous by Andy Reid. We've seen people drop that ball too. Yeah, it's a credit for catching. We saw some balls get dropped last night, and uh, and he caught the ball and he went and scored with it. So I want you to stop putting him in the category. Spencer Sanders, get these guys out of your doghouse. You Do you want love. Dan Sorensen playing snaps on defense? Would you rather them have a better I think player? Last night was about the right amount of snaps for Dan Sorensen. I think they could do better. Do you better. want Dan Sorensen to be on this team next season? No. Okay. I think they could do better than that. Okay. They should. But for right now, with for the right roster now, they have right got. now, sure. And they're doing it right. He's not out there every play. 
He was playing 100% snaps. I but mean, for Andy to kind of be like, almost like, a, to do that. I told you so. Like, That's what he does. Give he me loves a break. Dan Sorensen. Give me a break. It's the BYU Brotherhood, man. Loves him. He but is who, a hard worker. Who had, who had Ben Neiman tipping it to Dan Sorensen for the biggest play of the game? For the or for the play, I think the biggest play of the game was Byron Pringle forcing them off punt. But yeah, but the, the play that the play that ended that. it. Yeah, it was funny. Stephen told the story on the air before we got a little old school morning show text thing with Aaron Swartz still on it. And Aaron Swartz, one minute after he said, "When fifty six and forty nine are on the field together, something bad is going to happen." I mean, and I mean, he must have just hit send, and because he might have been. I'm watching live. He could have been on like you know thirty second delay watching whatever he's watching whatever cable he's watching at home and the ball tipped caught and I was like there's your guys it was great and <laughs> there are people in the stands going they look you know it's, most people just watch the game but there are plenty of people who are watching why isn't so and so in the game what's going on here and they look out there and it's it's easy to spot mm-hmm. Sorensen and, and Neiman you're like. Why are they both out there on the same field at the same time? What's going on here? This fans up in the upper deck going, what are these guys out there they for? always are in the dime package for some reason. Bing, bang, boom. The two guys that we think can't cover anybody are on the field the most. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, Andy says. When you know it's going to be passing downs. I did like the uh, the dr- foot drag showboating into the It was inside. great. Well, I <laughs> was, was happy sorry. for Dan. So I, I, Don't get me wrong. I'm not I even sure he was happy for himself. I he don't, is so like, non- impressed with anything when he talks to you he's bold yeah i don't right? dislike dan Sorensen. he's made a lot of great plays for this team i mean there is legitimate talk about will he be in the chief's ring of honor because of some of the big plays he's made in big moments it's not gonna happen but like he has made such big plays yeah. in big games for this team i have no disdain no hate for Dan Sorensen. Until the next for time Andy Reed to stand, you no, no. look up and see him chasing. No, 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 because no. no, I'm saying Dan Sorensen is what Dan Sorensen uh, is. Yeah. is yeah. And that's on Brett Veach and Andy Reed and Spags that he's out there in the positions that he's in. Mostly on Brett Veach, that there's not a better player on the roster that can play meaningful snaps than Dan. So he makes a play every once in a while. Everybody who's out, Mike Hughes has made plays. Hey, it's not their fault LeJarius Steve was too good to play safety. I mean, that's probably what he was supposed to be doing, right? And they're like, well, this guy, he can't be wasted back here at safety. Let's get him in here and playing some nickel and some corner. Yeah. It's so all these things kind of go together. I just thought it was weird. pretty disingenuous for Andy Reid to like you think Andy take a victory lap. Being disingenuous? That, to take a victory lap like Dan Sorensen suddenly back and he's like this guy that everybody – trust me, the next game when you see Dan Sorensen <laughs> out there, you're going to be like, oh, oh crap, fix they're going to go after that guy. And maybe he'll make a play. He but that's probably how it's gone. won't. That's how it's gone for the Chiefs defense for the last six weeks. Okay, I don't want to harp too much on Sorensen. I mentioned this before we went to break. Uh, you were talking about Patrick Mahomes and his numbers and how he was really good at the beginning of the season, his quarterback rating and all that. I thought these numbers were kind of crazy. So this Chiefs team, we all know they've won five straight, so they're 5-0. and They've given up 11.2 points per game in this stretch. When they started 3-4, and four, they were giving up 29 points per game. Now 11.2. That's a great Obviously, improvement. Obviously, an incredible improvement by the defense. The offense, through the first six games of the season, was scoring 31 points per game. And they were 3-3. Three and three. When Patrick Mahomes was one of the top-rated quarterbacks in the NFL, this team was 3-3. Three and three. Mm-hmm. Since that point, they've averaged 20 points per game, 11 points per game fewer, and they're 5-1 and in those six games. Patrick Mahomes has played poorly, and this team is 5-1, and and they were 3-3 and when he was playing great. And I think it's credit to the organization as a a unit. I I shouldn't say great. He was still turning the football over. Yeah, he was. When they were scoring a lot of points. The the numbers were great. The points were more, and the rating and all that stuff. Um, I think he's what's it's like eleven since since game one eleven touchdowns eight interceptions, but they're winning the games like you said. I mean, but it's health on the defense for sure. But it's also they just they're getting better on defense. They're getting better. Some of it may be opponent driven. I mean, they they didn't face Aaron Rodgers right. They faced Jordan Love. Um, the Raiders are the Raiders. It seems to be when they when they play the Chiefs the the you know. Giants weren't full strength, whatever. But this is a long enough streak to say to me, 
they're just legit playing some really good for defense. sure. And, and and there are reasons why. We, we've talked about this a lot. It's not just schedule driven. If you want to talk about oh the Cowboys are missing these guys and the Packers are missing, there are legitimate reasons that have nothing to do with the other team. And it's that Melvin Ingram has joined this team, which by the way he made two huge plays on that first, first drive, drive right? yesterday because Devontae Williams, who's a beast. That dude is a beast. Mm -hmm. Comes out and gets a nine-yard gain on the first play of the game. And then Melvin Ingram stops him for a loss on the next play. And then he gets to him first, and he and Willie Gay get the sack on third down. And that forces a three and out after they had gained nine yards on the first play. And I think that set the tone because then the offense comes out. They drive right down the field and get a touchdown. Defense comes out, forces another three and out. Like, if the Broncos, I'm not saying if they pick up that first down, the game is different. But Melvin Ingram, when the team gains nine yards on first down, I mean, that's almost a given that they're going to convert and move the chains, and Melvin Ingram makes back-to-back -back plays. So now Melvin Ingram is part of your defense. Chris Jones is healthy. Frank Clark is healthy. Willie Gay is healthy, and he wasn't even playing earlier in the season. Juan Thornhill is getting the snaps that Dan Sorensen was getting. Nick Bolton, although his snaps yesterday leave a little bit to be desired, uh, Nick Bolton has been an improvement at the linebacker position. Um there are legitimate reasons why you say this defense has gotten better. They've gotten healthy. Different players. I mean, Thornhill, Willie Gay, and Melvin Ingram, three mm -hmm. guys that weren't playing at the beginning of the season. Now, Thornhill played the first game because Tyron was out with COVID. Right. But after that, it was Sorensen and Matthew for the next several weeks. Right. But once Thornhill's gotten in there, Willie Gay's gotten healthy and gotten in there. Melvin Ingram's there now, which moves Chris Jones down to the middle. Chris Nick Jones Bolton is healthy. Learning. Frank Clark missed some games mm -hmm. because he was hurt. Various Ward yeah. missed some games. Like, this team is healthy. Knock on wood. Yep. And that's the reason this defense has turned it around. They've gotten healthy. Guys have gotten to where they're playing their natural positions, namely Chris Jones. And I don't, honestly, I expect for the remaining bit of, this, of the schedule, I, I don't think the Raiders you know, certainly aren't what they – what they could be, I mean, obviously Henry Ruggs and the tragic tragedy that he caused, you know, killing someone while he was driving and he's out of the league now and off the team, they're not as good as they were with him as a deep threat. So the Raiders offense isn't as good. So I don't think they're gonna face a very good Raiders offense. No, the Raiders okay. are and I think the, the Chargers Raiders just lost at home to the Washington football team. I think the Chargers, depending on the week, could be a that's gonna be a challenge for them. That'll be yeah. a legit challenge for this that's team. That's a game I think they're gonna lose. Then they're going to play the Steelers. Um, there's a game in between the Steelers. The Steelers are not good. It's right in front of you. The Steelers are not good offensively. So defense should be great that day. What are the Bengals going to be when they play? Them? What are the Bengals going to be playing for? That's a legit team um, offensively. So I think – and then the Broncos, if it's the last week of the year, eh, I don't know. Same thing you saw here. And I think by then they're probably drawing dead, okay? So I'm really interested in seeing this Chiefs defense play at the Chargers – and against the Bengals, because I think that's, mm -hmm. that's, that can't help but be a huge game for something for the Chiefs. I don't think... Every game from here on out is huge for the Chiefs just because of tiebreakers. I guess in, in some way, perhaps, maybe the Patriots just win all their games and they can't be first place or something by then. And they, maybe they have a two-game lead in the division. But I think that it, it'd be hard-pressed to think that the Bengals game is not going to be big for something. That we could at least at the start of the game, whatever. Yeah. I really want to see them against those two teams. That's what I want to see, this full-strength defense play against those two offenses. I want to see it. Because I, I like what I've seen against all, everyone else. I want to see him against that. I want to see him punch your boy Joe Mixon in the mouth. It could happen. Maybe he'll just lay the ball on the ground for him like he did yesterday. Oh, that was amazing. I, there's <laughs> maybe no player I've ever hated more in my life than Joe Mixon. So. Don't be like uh, that. Why? Why would you be like that? Because of what he did to the girl, Lebo, not because he went to OU. Well, he punched a girl. I mean, and, he, and he paid his price and went through the legal system for He it. did. He did. He did. But that, I can not like him. You can. I can not like him, and I can laugh when he fumbles and gives the game away yesterday. He's good. And also, he did have pretty good games against Oklahoma State. Sure. Sure he did. <laughs> He's a damn good player. He's but, uh, all the time. Uh, don't like that guy. All right, so the offensive struggle is continuing uh, for this team. This is the glaring stat for me yesterday was that Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill were targeted 13 times and only had five catches. Mm -hmm. That's a low number of targets for those guys in yeah. general, but then to only convert 38% of those, 38% catch rate to your two studs. Kelsey on the play, I mean, 
I, in the NFL, that was never going to get overturned. Awful challenge by Vic Fangio. That was never going to get overturned. But in the spirit of the rule, like to me, that's a fumble. Had they blown, they're, they're not, not blown the whistle? Yeah. Had, they, had they not blown the whistle, which they're not supposed to do, and let that play play out? We have different ballgame in our hands because that's a touchdown for the Broncos, and they won't overturn it the other yeah, way. Yeah, but either. you blow the whistle because you're saying it was incomplete. But we've seen a lot of times them not blow the whistle on those yeah. plays, and they let it go. They said, well, let's just fix it in a replay. I'm watching that thing. If I'm a Broncos fan, which I'm not, I'm like, dude, took two and a half steps, kind of turned. That's fumble. Yeah. And had they not blown it, it's a, it's a, it's a scoop and score. Well, I didn't think there was any chance it was getting overturned. I mean, right. whatever the call on the field was was going to stand. Either way. Yeah. But to me, it, it's the whole spirit of the rule conversation. Like, to me, that was clean. It wasn't a bobble. It wasn't anything like that. And on those bang-bang plays, like, sometimes it's a bobble and they really – he had – in my opinion, he had possession. And yeah. I bet you Travis Kelsey's probably like, whoo, I got away with one there. Yeah, for sure. Because well, I, I bet you Travis Kelsey would say, yeah, I had that. Yeah. If you put a little truth serum in Yeah, like if, if, if he had caught that and he had just hit the goal line with it, and then he's like, yeah, of course I caught the ball. Mm-hmm. I don't want that to be incomplete. You exactly. Know, I mean, we've seen some of those plays and yeah. they, where they go dissected by the inch and if it's happening around the goal line, absolutely I caught that ball. It was a super, super weird game. Wind-wise, there were 667 yards in that game. 107 of the yards came going left to right in the whole game. Oh, wow. Now, part of that was the 20-play drive going the other way mm-hmm. and at the time of possession, but it still wasn't like they, they didn't part have of the ball was, at all. Part of driving that, all the way down, and then Sorensen's pick six. Right. And then it comes all the way back down, so that's the not Chiefs a possession had there. 38 yards offensively going from left to right in the game. It was freaking crazy. And I think that's part of the reason Andy was like, I'm just, we're going to the halftime here. I don't want to mess with anything. But it, it was What'd like. What did you think of the decision? At the, at time, the time. At the time, I was like, this is not Andy Reid. Like, I got it. It I felt knew, weird. I knew what, because I was already kind of paying attention to the wind before the game. I was on with Briscoe, and I was like watching these guys kick kicks in pregame, and they were having a hard time kicking left to right because of the wind. I mean, we saw Dan, uh, we saw Butker miss a PAT mm-hmm. going that way, and I was like, the wind was really weird. So I, I was like, I got it, especially after they had just had the twenty play drive. They're like, all right, we stopped them. Let's get into halftime. We're getting the ball first. There's no reason to go try to to do something. But when you've watched Andy Reid coach here, you're like, what are you doing? You know, this is Patrick Mahomes, your quarterback. You go try to score because then you get your two for one. Let's get three here and get the ball to start the second half. But it was. You think if it's calm, I he makes the go. same decision? Because no, I don't. I, I think he goes for it if it's calm. Because otherwise, it, it's one of two things. It was either, you know what, let's just get to half. We get the ball first, and I don't want to risk it going into the wind. Or it is a shift in philosophy, and I don't believe that it's that. It's combo. I, it's I, I combo. Don't, I, I don't believe, but, but I think... It's game situation. But I think if there was no wind or five-mile-an-hour wind, mm-hmm. they're going for it there. Yeah. Because at the time, it's what, still 10-3. to 3. Yeah, I mean, you're I, trying I to take advantage of every possession. But it, of that 107 yards going that way, 52 of it came on one Broncos drive, and 36 of it was on one play. There was a play to Judy, right, kind of down mm-hmm. the sideline. So, like... Of the whatever, how which was a short was pass and a run ran yeah. on. That's like all there was. So we had five hundred and or whatever fifty some yards the other way. It was really crazy. I felt bad for the people, except they got to see Daniel Sorensen run into the end zone. If you were down at that end, you didn't see a lot of football. Yeah. You saw a lot of people going the other way. It was a really weird game that way. But the wind, it was crazy. The wind on the field was nuts. There was a spot in the second half. Some it was like a. It wasn't a program or a hot dog wrapper. It was like a significant piece of like cardboard, like you'd see someone, like a flip card or something, just went like a tumbleweed across the entire field at the field level. Like this is like crazy how much the wind was blowing down there. So it was a hundred percent a factor. Normally it just swirls up top, mm-hmm. but it was a factor. It was really stark to see uh, how much it was. But it was weird to watch Andy Reid go, "Ah, eh, we're good. Let's go to half." And then the Broncos were like, "Wait a second, I want to call a timeout now." And then they, of course, couldn't do anything with it. What about kicking a field goal to go up 13 with 13 and a half left in the game? At that point, you've got a 10-point lead. You've got fourth and two from the eight-yard line of the Chargers, I mean, of the Broncos. And he kicks the field goal to put him up 13. So you were two scores ahead, and you were still only two scores ahead. Well, there's two scores. It's 10-point lead is, is a 
field goal and a touchdown. And yep. 13 is still two scores, yep. but it's it's two touchdowns. But and it's still only two possessions. Had the Broncos scored a touchdown once? They had one touchdown? They, they hadn't had, at that point. So they didn't have any touchdowns. Yeah. So I get that, At that too. point, it was 13-3, to and he kicked a field goal to go 16-3. But it's to not three. 2021. It's not 2021, but it's not the way you you want it to be. That's as much, I think, about what the Chiefs are right now. And I think it was circumstantial. I think it was the way Denver was yeah. playing offensively, the way his team was playing defensively, and saying, you know what? I also don't think he thought they were done scoring. So in his mind, yeah. it's you do that, and maybe Denver, even if they get two touchdowns, you're going to get at least another field goal. And I, I don't have a problem with it. When your defense is playing as well as the Chiefs were playing. Yeah, you just laid the numbers out. And you just keep putting up points. You just keep putting up points, guarantee yourself some points here. They're allowing points 11 there. points. And yeah. They already had more than that, if, and that got them up. That was the one to get them to 16. I don't think or, he does that if they're playing the Bills. I don't think not. he does that if they're playing you know, the Packers or the Cardinals yeah. or you know, if they're playing the Chargers. I don't think he kicks there. I think he goes for it. But on a night where the Broncos had only managed a field goal, where your defense had played really well, and Teddy Bridgewater was the quarterback, and Vic Fangio was the coach on the other side. Like, I, to me, that is playing the game and playing to the strength of what your team is right now. And the strength of this team, somehow, some way, is the defense. Who would have thunk it? I know. Remember, like in the middle of September, we're like, man, this defense is really going to carry this team when it counts. Yeah. Yeah. When they were on pace to be one of the worst <laughs> in the history of the NFL. Which is saying something with the defense is like they had 2018 Chiefs defense. All right, let's take a quick time out. When we come back, we'll continue talking. We'll take your phone calls, 913-3810-810, if you guys want to weigh in on what happened in the Chiefs and the Broncos. 913-3810-810, more zone next. Nine one three three eight ten eight ten. the phone number if you want to weigh in on Chiefs Broncos last night. Corey Anderson, Todd Lebo, Beards with you here. On the zone, we will hear from Andy Reid a little less than an hour from now. He will uh, be speaking in the noon hour, so we'll get his thoughts after he's had a chance to look at the tape and what he thinks of this uh, Chiefs-Broncos game. And I doubt he'll look ahead much to the Raiders, but I'm sure he'll be asked. It will be a challenge. He'll probably be looking forward to the challenge of playing the Raiders and how well coached they are, uh, which would be a surprise because I watched that team yesterday and the uh, cluster bleep that it was in the closing seconds with timeouts and trying to get into field goal range. And uh, I would say that that team is not well coached. Mm-hmm. What's it? Rich Basaccia? Is that his yeah. name? Basaccia. Yeah. Yeah. Rich, but not, not going to work here next year. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, that team, if Andy Reid says that team's well coached, it'd be like saying Vic Fangio's well coached. Speaking of Vic Fangio, uh, last night in the post game, I just thought this was funny. I don't even really care about his answers, but I want you to think if this was the coach in our market. If we're here and we're cover, if we're in Denver and we are covering Vic Fangio and he's asked the question, hey, it kind of looked like there was some confusion on that fourth down play. You remember the last play of the 20 play drive, mm-hmm. fourth and two, and the Chiefs stopped Javante Williams. It looked like there was some confusion on that fourth down play of the 20 play drive. That was, um, there was a little confusion. Um, and by the time there that, um, we knew there was confusion. We didn't think there was, but there obviously was. It was too late to call a timeout. Your early challenge? Yeah. Did you think that was a, a fumble on the street? Yeah, I did. You know, and by the way they answered me, they uh, they really weren't sure. They, you know, it was close, and uh, it was worth the challenge. The guy took a couple steps, then we knocked it out. I think it was a good challenge, even though it didn't work. No, it's not. I thought it's worth trying because it was close. So, I mean, what are you going to do? It's, it's not that big a deal. But I don't. To have, me, a challenge lost is never worth a challenge. Well, because you lose a challenge, that, you lose a timeout. That's true. But there are some that are just clear that they're not. That was at least like, hey, this ain't that easy. Saying there's not enough time for a timeout is the biggest bunch of BS ever. But, like, yeah, there was some confusion. When did you realize there, there was, was some confusion. confusion? We didn't know there was confusion, with, but it turns out there was confusion. With and, .5 seconds on the play clock, you figured it out? I he mean, just sounds like yeah. a fool. Yes, he does. Thank it, goodness that guy's not coaching here. So there was a guy who I don't know. He was There was a Broncos rider in the Chiefs post game, mm-hmm. And that's not always the case because not as many people get to travel now and, and go into the deals in the 2M media. So there was a Broncos guy in there, and we're all just sitting in there, and there's people talking, and 
And, you know, listen, there's not a bunch of fans in the Chiefs media here, but you just kind of talk about the game and how it went. And he, he's like, turned to me because we were sitting right next to him. He goes, he goes, you know how hard it is to win five games in a row? You act, act like this team lost or something like that when they're like <laughs> getting ready to ask questions and he's going to ask what? So he's been listening to Vic Vangio all year. Uh-huh. And he's like, uh, okay, this is, this is what it's like to go win like – all the games and not a, he just watched confusion. Now was this guy older? Do you? No, he was. Uh, he was. He looked like he was in his thirties or something. So like he that. might have covered the Peyton Manning years. So he might have Maybe known so. exactly what it was like. He didn't seem like it. He was like, he's, what did, what's wrong? Well, I, the Broncos won a Super Bowl in a year, kind of like this. Yeah, where their quarterback wasn't mm-hmm. their Hall of Fame quarterback Peyton yeah. Manning wasn't playing very well. But the, now that defense, was, nobody doubted from the right. jump, was great. Yeah, they didn't allow thirty three points yeah, a game in the first but, month. That defense yeah. carried them with their Hall of Fame quarterback not playing very well. So who knows? Maybe this the fans uh, Chiefs around team the NFL a, would love the Chiefs' problems, no doubt. Yeah, eight and four, tied for the best record in the AFC. Especially when they, uh, I mean, halftime of the game in Tennessee looked like time to give up everything. They were getting crushed in that game and didn't get any better offensively in the second half because they you know, three points the game and at one point. Mahomes got his head knocked backwards and was never in the protocol, but looked like he should have been in the protocol. Mm-hmm. You're walking around dizzy. You're like, this season is a freaking mess. And now they're like, oh, okay. You something just... happened. Just like the year they won the Super Bowl, something happened defensively when they went to Tennessee and lost. I think what this it? team did that same thing back in 2019. They lost that game, what, like 38 35, something yeah, like that? They just bumbled it and bad special teams and blocked field goals. And then and from all that point stuff. on, the defense was just nails. Yeah. And since that game now, this defense has given up 11.2 points per game. Did uh, Raul Labanez come in and give him a pep, pep talk? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you close door meeting. You don't know how good you are. I don't know. <laughs> but they need to schedule a midseason game at Tennessee every year and just lose it. To and lose. Just understand that it's going to be better. Yeah. Afterwards. So we've talked about how good the defense has been and how this team has gone five and one despite the offense. You know, this team, after the Tennessee game, Lebo, they were minus 10 in turnover differential in the NFL, or minus 10 in turnover differential, which put them yeah. second to last in the NFL. That's poor. Yes. Yes. When they've gone five and one over these last six games, they haven't been great. They're only yeah. plus five. I was going to say, I thought it was, you know, eh. They're only plus five. Yeah, you fine. know why? Because the offense has still turned it over <laughs> six <laughs> times. Yes. Six times in their five-game win streak. But the defense, but the defense has forced 11. Yeah. Defense slash special teams. Because, like, last yeah. night, Byron Pringle yeah. forces one. So they forced 11 turnovers. But the offense is still turning it over. You've gone 5-0. and oh, and you've turned it over six times in those five games. The Chiefs only have two games this season without a turnover. The Browns game, the first game mm-hmm. of the year, and then the Packers game that they won 13-7. to Every other game they have at least one, and they have multiple turnovers in a lot of games. Of all the wacky stats and stuff we talk about here, and um, the one that struck me as I was looking through stuff last night and this morning is, can you tell me the last time Patrick Mahomes went two straight games without throwing a touchdown? Never. Never. It's never happened. Can you tell me the last time, including college, that he went two straight games without throwing a touchdown? I'll guess never. Never. Yeah. And I'm assuming, I don't have all his game logs from White House High School in Tyler, Texas. I'm assuming it was a never there as well. I could see it happening there because high school football, sometimes you can just run all over a team. And they, and, you generally, know. they generally yeah. scored about 60 points a game yeah. throwing the ball. So he probably and then did he would, it every game. They would too. lose in the state playoffs uh, 60 to you know, 65 or something yeah, like that. He's never gone two games. Yeah. And, without... and um, it wasn't like he threw one, that got dropped or something. No. In this game. No, right? he ran one in. He did. That's fine. So he yeah, got a first touchdown. First time he'd run one in for a long time. Too. Since the Browns game. But he had never gone in the NFL two games without throwing a, a touchdown pass. You know what else he did last night? Talk about guys that show up under the bright lights. It was the first ever primetime Patrick Mahomes performance without a touchdown pass. He's played in 20 primetime games. He never played in one without a touchdown. But they won. And that's what he mentioned last night. It was like he's played in a lot of games where he threw a lot of touchdowns. And they've scored a lot of points and they've lost. There have been some primetimers out there against the Rams or, you know, uh, the New England, the back and forth they had in 19, I think. I mean, he's had a lot of those games. And he has said this from, from the jump, from the get-go. He wants to win football games. Mm-hmm. 
Now, we'll see how it goes, how frustrated you get if you win football games without throwing touchdown passes, but he's already got the bag, right? Yeah. Contract's out there. It's all good, but they're winning, and that's important. If you can if you can go two games without a touchdown pass from your quarterback, who is the MVP in the league, blah, 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 blah and win games, that says something good about your, your team. Speaking of last night after the game, Patrick Mahomes, uh, I, I, I think of the white men can't jump when uh, Billy Ho tells uh, Sidney Dean, uh, you'd rather look good and lose than look bad and win. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes is the opposite. I've learned kind of as my career has gone on that you can't get caught up in like the hype and like the show uh, of playing. I've been in a lot of football games where we scored a lot of points and lost. And um, I promise you when you when you win football games like this, it feels a lot better. Um, and so I, I think I, I don't know if that's just kind of with experience, um, but I kind of preach that to these guys when they were kind of running the ball and trying to wait, uh, really grind the clock through. I said, don't let that affect how we play. Let's continue to just execute and go out there and get put points on the board because our defense is our defense is playing the way that they're playing. Um, and so you have to learn how to manage games. You have to learn how to win football games whenever it's not pretty. And I think we've done a great job of that this season. I think that's easy for him to say because I don't the think the bag he, and the ring and yeah, the trophy. Well, and, all that. I, yeah. and I also don't think he lacks for any confidence. Despite no, the fact that he's struggling, I think he thinks, and not thinks, I think he believes and knows that they're going to sh- snap out of this. That offensively they're going to start putting up points. So it's easy for him to say right now, Oh, yeah. Let the defense do what they're doing. Because I remember when I was throwing a bunch of touchdowns earlier in this season, and we were 3-3, three and three, and we were 3-4. and four. And I since then, I haven't played very good, but the defense has been great. So I'm cool with this. And he mentioned it in there. It's about maturity as well. Mm-hmm. There have been plenty of people who I've watched, young, young players in their careers, whether whatever sport it is. You go to basketball, some guy scores 27 and they lose. Hey, man, I got mine. Or I have three for four tonight. We lost the game. There have been a lot of that going on. And I've seen football players. I got my 100. You know, I caught two interceptions or seven passes, and they're fine. If they don't win, he's not happy, Mm -mm. okay? And he's not happy at some point. He wasn't happy last night when they had the – he got sacked and took him out of field goal range and the enemy where he were kind of drawn on the sideline a little bit. I sat there and watched him through my binoculars for like the next four minutes while they didn't have the ball. Mm -hmm. He's – just stewing. 30 yard, he's stewing, and Travis Kelsey comes over, and Orlando Brown comes over, and Eric Bieniemy came over. He was stewing, and the, all he got to do after that was go ahead and kneel on the ball twice. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he is not happy with what happened, what happened last night, but he truly believes it's about the alphabets, and he gets that now. But that's really easy to do when you've won an MVP, and you've won a Super Bowl, and you've gone twice, and you've got a half a billion dollar contract. It's, it's a lot easier to believe that. And feel that way, but he does, and that's good because you, what you don't want is someone who's going to pout and and mess things up for you because it, it can happen. There's some quarterbacks out there who don't get the big picture. He does. And last night after the game, also talking about that, like you say, all he cares about is the alphabets, as as Eric Bieniemy likes to say. Uh, he said, "Let's not forget." We're getting wins. I think we'll continue to get better and better. Um, we're still winning football games. Don't, we don't want to get lost in that. We're winning a lot of football games, and we're winning by pretty big margins. Um, but uh, we expect greatness from each other, and so uh, we want to continue to get better as an offense, and uh, the defense continue to get better, and hopefully create a great football team. However you win, a win is a win in this league. Mm-hmm. And they've covered three straight. They've won five in a row. Like, And I... I know we're just going to keep saying it, like we just expect that the offense at some point, maybe they're not going to be great again this season. Maybe this off, maybe there just needs to be some tweaking this off season. Maybe they need some different personnel. I don't know. Maybe they're not going to be great again this year. But I hopefully they'll have some of those I was, games. I was about to say 40. I firmly believe they'll be a lot better. I think that there's definitely room for them well, the to get a lot better, and part there's is, good enough players that they could turn it around. They just came off a bye, yeah. and they didn't look a lot better offensively. Yeah. That's, now, that's a good defense they played. It is. Very it's, good. it's a top-five scoring defense 100%. in the NFL. So. And they're going to play them again later. Who knows what that game will mean this last week of the year. But they play the Raiders this week. They yeah. hung 41 on them last time. It was in a dome, and it was you know we'll see what they do if if the weather is decent this week they and they go out seventeen and lay, against the Raiders. Yeah, I'll be they, like, mm, maybe if they the lay an egg this week. Yeah. That's that, and if they lay an egg against the Chargers, because that game's going to be weather controlled, yep. and the Chargers defense sucks, mm-hmm. so that game should be a shootout unless the Chiefs, unless defense, the Chiefs defense stops defense Justin just Herbert jumps up and does. But what they Mahomes do. and company should they should at the very least 
average, what, 27 points per game these next two? Yeah, I would think so. I would think that's a, a decent place to start for them. and they, the they, ought to be able to, they ought to be able to do that. And, hey, listen, here's the deal. Winning ugly is fine. You don't think the Patriots' 13-3 to Super Bowl win over the Rams? Counts. Diamonds are shiny. That ring looks just as good as the others. It's beautiful. Yep. It's a beautiful ring for them. You know, that, that's kind of the way it goes. So, I, yeah, they're winning some kind of ugliest games right now, but they are winning. And I think what Mahomes is telling us right here, it makes sense. You know, that that makes sense to me. And it I like the fact that he's cool with it, that he is not some sort of um, – but he's mature. He's, he's still a youngish quarterback, but he's gone through a lot in the NFL. He's mature enough to know. And I'm telling you, he lost a lot of games in college because his defense was bad and they just couldn't make plays. He likes winning more than he likes – throwing touchdowns. Now, what you'd like to do is throw five touchdowns for 400 yards like he did against the Raiders mm-hmm. and win 41-14. to 14. It don't happen all the time. Nope. They're all getting paid. And there's some teams who are fighting hard to stop the Chiefs, and the Chiefs are stopping themselves sometimes. Partially his fault, partially the receiver's fault, but they're winning games. It's all about the outbets. He's going to make that shirt. It's all about the outbets. That's right. All right, take a quick timeout. Scott, Mike, hang with us. We'll lead off with your calls coming up next here on The Zone. First Mortgage Direct text line. Text comes in and says, Watching McCall Hardman get his head lifted up by the face mask and not called. Patrick Mahomes getting a ticky-tack call for raising his hands too fast. Thank you to Mr. Hitchens for answering back. Yeah, I'm not saying I was mad to see Anthony Hitchens lay out that lineman. That was fun to see. But it was the right call that it's a penalty, and I won't be surprised if he gets fined. I mean, he was... He was loading up, ready to lay that dude out. Chiefs get the win, twenty-two to nine, moving to eight and four. That's their twelfth consecutive win over the Broncos. That is the longest streak in Chiefs history over any opponent. It is also tied for the eighth longest streak in NFL history against any opponent. The longest, Miami versus Buffalo. The Dolphins beating the Bills twenty consecutive times. From 1970 to 1979, so the Chiefs need to get uh, eight more wins in a row against the Broncos if they want to challenge that record. All right, real quick, before we break, let's get to Scott. Scott, you're on the zone. What's going on, man? Cowboy, hey, uh, I just wanted to say before I get it, I got a couple of Chiefs takes. Um, that was the Missouliest loss by your Cowboys on Saturday. I think <laughs> they may have even out mizzou Mizzou on uh, on how to lose that. Not that you don't already know that. No, but, and uh, it's, man, you know, I and I would, you, if Mizzou did the same thing, I'd say that's the most Oklahoma stadious loss <laughs> Mizzou has ever had. So uh, we, we feel each other's pain, man. Yes, sir, buddy. Um, one point, uh, does Andy Reid pay property taxes in Colorado because he owns Denver, uh, by the way? But anyway, um, my, my point is, and I, you, you know me, you know, I'm never going to criticize Patrick because, you know, I think he's the second coming. Um, and, you know, I, I, I but you know, it is okay. Him. It's okay. He's, I, he's a grown man. He, he, he can take the criticism. I, I love him as a son, uh, <laughs> you know, but I do think Patrick, he has a little bit of, Jackson and Brittany in him and that he needs to read the room a little bit, you know, just like some of the sidearm and no look stuff. That's great when you're dropping dimes and throwing for 400, but when you're struggling a little bit, maybe just, just bring Alex in and, 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 you know, counsel him a little bit on just, Hey, just, just take what's there and don't, it doesn't have to. And I know you don't want to, you know, it's like you're trying to tame a, wild stallion or something i mean you don't want to take everything away but there i think patrick just a a little bit of just kind of needs to read the room a little bit at least get get going you know steph curry doesn't need to shoot 40 footers if he's you know two for 15 you know if you if you're if you got a heat check fine but you know a little bit of just Read the room a little bit, Patrick. That's as close as I'm going to get to criticize. Yeah, and I, I so. think, Scott, though, with him, like, and tell me if you think I'm wrong here. I, I don't feel like sometimes I think it's a little showboaty. And I think yeah, when, and when he's in a zone that it is. I don't think that some of this other stuff that we see, though, is him trying to showboat. I think it's just 
It's just natural. It's what comes to him because he throws it that way in practice. He does all this stuff. He does the no looks. Like I think it's second nature to him, whereas to some it might seem like showboating, and sometimes I think it is. I think a lot of times it's just his second nature, and it's just how he plays the position. Yeah, I mean, he's cool as hell. And, I mean, he plays <laughs> with a flair. But, you know, it's like, hey, you know, like like the, the cliche in basketball, man, if you're if your Jay's not if your Jay's not hitting, take it to the lane and try to go to the line. And you know he's, I feel like a little bit the last, you know, at home at least he's just been kind of, well, it, it didn't go from twenty five, so let's shoot it from twenty eight here. You know, I don't know, but that's just me. So again, I don't want to criticize the man because he walks on water in my eyes, but uh, you know, that's as close as I'll do to uh, criticizing him. I guess. All right, appreciate the call, take Scott. Care. Thanks, man. Uh, it's okay to criticize Patrick Mahomes. It's okay. He's not playing that well. He admits it. He talks about it in his press conferences. It's not as though Patrick Mahomes thinks he's playing great football, and if you say something negative, you're going to mess with his psyche. He's not that fragile. He knows what he is, and that's why I think he's perfectly fine winning games like this and absolutely loves it because the defense is getting all the confidence the defense is getting their swagger back. Oh! And he knows that this offense is going to turn it around. Do we know that? I wouldn't bet my life on it. But I know they're capable of it because of the guys they have on that offense. But I guarantee you Patrick Mahomes believes it and knows that they're going to get back on track. All right, we'll take a timeout. 913-3810-810. You guys want to weigh in, feel free. We'll hear from Andy Reid later next hour.